This is going to be Daniel chapter 6, and we're going to look at the subject of spiritual line tamers. As Christians, we can learn from Daniel in this chapter, and we can also learn from other men that handled some lions in the Bible, or some men who were defeated by a lion in the Bible. But number one, if you want to be a spiritual line tamer, be not of the world. Uh, the God of this world is the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And that will take on an even more literal interpretation in the time of Jacob's trouble. But if we are of the world, then we are in danger of being devoured by the lion. But Daniel was in the world, but not of the world. He lived his life in this world, did what he had to do, but he didn't, he didn't let the world influence him. Now look at Daniel chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. So Belshazzar was killed. Cyrus took over and left Darius in charge. And he has the kingdom divided into 120 provinces. Daniel 6, 2. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. So it goes, kings first, presidents second, princes third, but Daniel was over all of these. So he has the preeminence. And while Daniel is a top of the Holy Spirit in other chapters, in this chapter he's a top of Jesus Christ. And it says about Jesus Christ in Colossians 1.18, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So Jesus Christ has the preeminence. And Jesus Christ is the greatest lion tamer. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he tamed the roaring lion who walks about seeking whom he may devour. And he is also going to cast him into the lake of fire. Now Daniel 6.3 it says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So Daniel was set over the whole realm, and Jesus Christ is said to be anointed with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. In Hebrews 1.9. It, and so it's it's God's intention to set Jesus Christ over the kingdoms in the millennium. So you see similarities here already within the first few verses how Daniel is showing us the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's over the whole realm and then it's God's intention to set Jesus Christ over the kingdoms in the millennium. Now Daniel was over the whole realm and he is an exception to the rule that most leaders are worldly and wicked because he wasn't worldly or wicked. Don't let anyone make you think you have to compromise with the sinful world to live your life, go to work, and provide for your family. You can be out in the world and not be of the world, like Daniel. So if you want to be a spiritual line tamer like Daniel, you can't let the world overtake you and be caught up with the love of this world and the riches and lusts that will come your way. And now number two, don't get the big head. Even though Daniel had authority and power, he had wisdom and knowledge. He didn't let, let it get to his head. Uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 1 says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And a pitfall of a Bible believer is becoming so sound in your doctrine and so well versed in the Bible that you might start getting the big head. And no matter how much you learn about the Bible, you're still really not going to know very much. And this is an open door for the devil to walk in when you think that you know so much. Because if a man thinketh himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. Now about the excellent spirit in Daniel, that would be the Holy Spirit. 
He had the Holy Spirit indwelling him. Uh, Daniel had rule and authority. And like I said, he's an exception to the rule that most people in high authority are wicked. They were all throughout the Bible, and they are today. And every now and then you get someone good in authority. But he didn't let this authority go to his head. But once you let things go to your head, you're opening the door for the devil to come in because you're already deceiving yourself. And number three, realize you will be hated for the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't realize now that you are going to face persecution for being a Christian, then later on down the road this opens a door for the lion to tear you to pieces. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus so shall suffer persecution. If the world hates you, just know it hated Jesus Christ before it hated you. Uh, Daniel, who is the type of Jesus Christ in this chapter, is hated. Just like Jesus Christ, he has man gathering together against him. And Daniel has men gathering together against him. If you stick up for something, then you're going to have the lost world, and even sometimes other Christians, gathering together against you. Whether it be out of jealousy, or just because you make them convicted for the sins that they're doing, because you've got the Bible, and the Bible shedding light on their sinful deeds. And Psalms 3, 6 says, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set, that have set themselves against me. He gets me round about. The fear of man bringeth a snare. And Daniel 6, 4 says, Then the presidents and prison princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but, but they could not find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful... Neither was there any error or fault found in him. So Daniel worked with wicked men and stayed faithful at work, even though these men were against him. And we need to be faithful where we work and around who we work so we don't ruin our testimony. And we'll always have that open door to give the gospel because we've been respectful to people. And we've not acted like self-righteous Pharisees. And there was neither error nor fault found in him. That should be your testimony. It would be a great testimony to go to work every day and never tell a dirty joke and never cuss and never yell at anybody, but always be that person who is always smiling and not judging people, but yet you want to tell them they're a sinner, tell them they need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Titus 2.8 says, Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. And that's like Daniel. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. Uh, Daniel didn't have anything bad found in him that could be seen on the outside. He is like Jesus Christ in this way as well. Although Jesus Christ was perfect and sinless inside and out. 1 Peter 2.21-22 it says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. So, another way Daniel is showing us Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And if you go to work every day, and you're letting the people get the best of you, or you're act, acting worldly or like a lost person yourself, then you're letting the lion get in. You're ruining your testimony. You're bringing shame to the name of Christians. And this does nothing but help the devil. And he will destroy your life this way. Now Daniel 6, 5, Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So these lost men know that they can't get Daniel to break the law unless the law goes against his God. Just like we shouldn't break the law today until it goes contrary to what God said in his book. 
So they have set themselves against Daniel, just like they set themselves against Jesus Christ. And Psalms 2, 2 says, The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Uh, men in high power are always going to gather themselves against Jesus Christ. Now Daniel 6, 6 and 7. Then these presidents and princes assembled together. So it's an ecumenical movement here. Coming together against one man. Assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Notice they said all the presidents of the kingdom got together. But they lied because Daniel was a president and he wasn't consulted in the matter. And notice that they're trying to use flattery to get the king to do what they want. They say, if any man shall ask a petition of any god other than thee, O king, then he shall be cast into the den of lions. They're trying to use flattery to get their way. And you'll see people do this even today. Things haven't changed. And you have to watch out for people who do that because they don't have your best interest at heart. They got their own interest at heart. And now Daniel 6, 8, Now king established the decree and signed the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Median Persians, which altereth not. So if he signs this, he can't come back later and change it because you can't alter the law of the Medes and Persians. Okay, now moving on, if you're going to be a spiritual line tamer, you need to prepare for battle. If any soldier of Jesus Christ is going to face the lions out of hell, he's going to have to be prepared. Uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're going to have to study so that you won't be deceived. You're going to have to pray so you won't be overcome with temptation. You're going to have to get rid of some things in your life, causing you to be more vulnerable to sin, causing you to be weak. And if you're weak, then the lion's going to just tear you to pieces. But Daniel was prepared for the lions that he was about to face. Daniel 6, 9, and 10 says, Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. Now notice this, as he did aforetime. That's key, as he did aforetime. If you're going to face the lions, you need to be a prayer warrior. You need the shield of faith. You need the sharp two-edged sword. You need the whole armor of God. So Daniel heard about the decree, and the first thing he did was pray. And notice that phrase, as he did aforetime. He had already been praying before he found out about the decree. And the best thing to do is stay in prayer even before the trouble comes. He prayed three times a day, just like David did. Evening, morning, and at noon. Psalms fifty-five seventeen. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So Daniel prepared himself to face the lions through prayer. And that is the only way to really face anything. If God doesn't help you, then the lion is going to tear you to pieces. If you look at 1 Samuel 17 and 37, it says something about King David. Here it says, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. So David, a lion tamer, knew that he didn't get away from the paw of the lion through his own strength, but through the Lord's. And that is the only way you'll get through. You better start praying now before the lion comes. Get your conscience clear. Cleanse yourself with the word. Confess your sins. Stay ready for the rapture. 
Uh, Daniel 6.11 says, Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. So let the lost world find you doing in secret what you have been doing in front of them in the open. It says, They found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. He was doing this in private and they walked in and found him. Uh, somebody said the other day, uh, Who you are by yourself is the Christian that you really are. How you act behind closed doors is how you really are as a person. Uh, Daniel 6.12 says, Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which authoreth not. So he he knows he can't go back and change the law of the Medes and Persians. And the king and no one else could, could ever alter the law. Daniel 6.13 Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Notice that they made it personal to the king. By saying, he regardeth not thee, O king, like it was his idea to do it anyway. Uh, but it wasn't personal to the king. Daniel wasn't doing this just to go against the king. He's doing it because he didn't want to go against his God. And Daniel didn't have anything against the king. But the men used flattery to get their way. They are trying to flatter him by saying, he regardeth not thee, O king. And people are like that today. If you're out working, you'll see how people will go to the supervisor and tell them you're not doing something and act like they got the supervisor's best interest at heart. But all they really are doing is trying to get ahead themselves, just like these men here. Daniel 6.14 says, Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. So the king was displeased with himself that he even signed that decree. And this pictures the feeling God had towards the death of his son. Uh, you know that God really loves us because he sent his son to die for us. And the first time uh, love is mentioned, it's talking about Abraham sacrificing his son the greatest love anybody has is a man for his son not a woman with her baby the greatest love anyone has according to god is a man a man's love for his son and god the father while it pleased god to die on the cross it pleased god to send his son at the same time it hurt god to see his son die And this pictures the feeling God had toward the death of his son here in Daniel 6.14. It says, Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. Daniel 6.15, Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Median Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. So number five, if you're going to be a lion tamer, have faith in God. Daniel had faith, and the king even had faith that God would deliver him as well. And if you're going to face a lion, then you need the boldness and confidence that comes with having faith in the one who put the stars in the sky. If there's anybody worthy to have faith in, it's God who made the worlds. And the king had faith, as you just seen in Daniel 6.14, he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him, to deliver Daniel. He had faith that uh, there was going to be a way to change this. But even though there wasn't, he still had faith in Daniel 6.16. 6, then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him to the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. So notice that. Darius, a lost man, 
has a lot of faith in God compared to some Christians have even. Daniel 6, 17, And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Now we see another great picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And if you look at Matthew twenty-seven fifty-nine and 60, it says, When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. So right there is another similarity. And not only is Daniel going to face lions, but he is also going to face them in a den with a stone rolled over it. So the odds are against him if he doesn't have God's favor. And Second Samuel 23.20 shows us another lion tamer. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzal, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in a time of snow. So Benaiah had the odds against him. He was outnumbered by two lion-like men and also slew a lion in the midst of a pit on a time of snow. And Benaiah, I'm sure, had training. And the spiritual lion tamer also needs training. The same way Benaiah was a physical lion tamer, he could kill a real lion. He had to have some training to do that. He had to be in shape. He had to have had some type of skill. But mostly he had to have God on his side. And the spiritual lion tamer, we're going to have to study. We're going to have to train. But most of all, we're going to have to have God on our side. Don't forget to seek ye out the book of the Lord and read it. Uh, study the word of God. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. You need to know the Bible so well that you can answer the majority of the questions that are thrown at you. First Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You can't handle the lions because you're not prayed up like Daniel and because you haven't been trained up like Benaiah. You're going to be outnumbered and surrounded by the enemy with no way to escape. And you're going to need the sharp two-edged sword in the favor of God prayed down on yourself every day. And now Daniel 6, 18 to 19. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And this pictures Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James going early in the morning to Jesus Christ's tomb. Remember when you read the Gospels how they also went early in the morning to see about Jesus Christ. Just like the king here is going early in the morning to see about Daniel. Daniel 6.20 And when he came to the den he cried with a lament lamentable voice unto Daniel and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? And I believe Darius obviously didn't want Daniel to die. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency, innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Notice, innocence was found in Daniel, and Jesus Christ was without sin. He was innocent, and died voluntarily for our sins. And Daniel coming out of the den unhurt, pictures Jesus Christ resurrecting. John 19.36 says, A bone of him shall not be broken. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he didn't have any bones broken. And neither was Daniel's here in this story. The, the lions didn't even touch him. The angel of the Lord shut the mouth of the lion. And that takes someone pretty strong. And you want someone pretty strong on your side. And Daniel prayed him down and he showed up. The angel of the Lord is just a pre-incarnate appearance of G Jesus Christ. And it feels good when you pray really hard. 
and then the Lord actually shows up. However, if the Lord hadn't have showed up, Daniel would have still given him the glory. Uh, Judges 14, 5 through 6 talks about another lion tamer, a physical lion tamer. And this is Samson. It says, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Notice the Spirit of the Lord came on Samson when he stopped the mouth of the lion. The Spirit of the Lord is what kept Daniel safe and stopped the mouth of the lions. Samson was strong, but without God he had no strength. You know the story. Don't think you can do it on your own. Daniel was wise, but he couldn't outsmart some hungry lions in a den. God had to intervene. And a weak man who prays is better than a strong man who doesn't pray. A weak man who stays in fellowship with God is better off than a strong man relying on his own strength. And now Hebrews eleven, thirty-two and 33 says, And what, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and David also and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Uh, these great men in the Old Testament defeated lions. And it wasn't in their own strength, it was God's strength. And the angel of the Lord closed the lion's mouth. But Daniel is the one who prayed the Lord down. I wonder if Daniel didn't pray three times a day, what would have happened? Daniel 6.23 says, Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. So no manner of hurt was found on him because he believed in his God. If you want to be able to overcome lions, you're going to have to have faith. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. If you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, putting your trust in him and his shed blood to get you to heaven, the devil can't touch your soul. He can't devour the soul of the child of God. God will take care of you. He just wants you to trust him. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 2.14 says, I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. So if you're saved, you've already overcome the lion because you've got born again. He can't touch your soul. He can still touch your flesh. And that's why you need to read the word of God daily. And confess your sins to God when you sin and stay in fellowship. Because he's the only one that can deliver you from the lion in this physical world you're in now. And number six, learn from the failure of others. If you're going to be a spiritual lion tamer, you're going to have to see others' failures and then learn from it so you don't make that same mistake. Now, in your Christian life, you're going to see other Christians overtaken by a lion. And they're going to slip up and get off into sin and everything else. But you need to learn from their mistakes. Don't just say, well, they did it and they're a Christian, so I can do it. And don't think to yourself that you can use their sin to justify your own and make you look better than they look. And don't use the sin to kick them down. Use their sin as a wake-up call and learn from their failure. Daniel 6.24 says, And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Now, those who aren't on God's side will have no hope against the lion. Uh, they, they thought the lions were going to be working in their favor. They thought these lions were going to kill Daniel. And so that they could get his power and his authority. 
and they're a lost men in great power, and they think Satan, the, the roaring lion, is on their side. However, they don't realize they're deceiving while being deceived themselves, and one day the devil is going to devour them like these men are devoured here in Daniel chapter 6, and just like that prophet that disobeyed God was devoured by the lion. In 1 Kings 13, remember how uh, the, the lion ate him up because he went against what God said and did what the old prophet said. And if you're going to be a lion tamer, you need to be a Bible believer. Take what the book says and not necessarily what great men have said because they're not always wise. The old prophet that told the young, young prophet what to do, he wasn't wise. And Daniel 6.25, The king Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. And number seven, you're going to need to give God the glory. If you have just, just defeated a lion, you better give God the glory. Because if it wasn't for him, then you would have lost. You would have lost everything just like Job did. And God let it happen. Notice how Darius and Daniel both gave God the glory. Daniel six twenty six and 27 and 28. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. In his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, in his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Notice that Daniel prospered, and those men tried to get him in trouble, who were ate by the lions. They tried to get him in trouble for obeying the law of his God, but he obeyed it anyway. And Psalms 1 sums up this story. Daniel obeyed God and prospered. The ungodly men who attacked Daniel ended up dead. And let's read Psalms 1, and it just sums up this whole story. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This story ended with Daniel prospering, and the men who were trying to take him down, it were perished and in hell. But this has been a study on Daniel chapter 6.